down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. Every year, one of my highlights is packing my boat, my fishing gear, taking my pups, and going on a drive-to wilderness adventure. I enjoy staying at lodges where they cook your meals and they do everything for you and even provide a guide, but I also like to stay in cabins where I make our own meals and we go out and come back whenever we want. It's kind of nice because you can fish really late. Did you know that Ontario has over 350,000 lakes? And within 10 hours of the GTA in Southern Ontario, many of those lakes you can drive to and have some fantastic fishing. on a crankbait. You know, it seems that during the day, we've had to catch all our fish on jigs using the soft plastics. Now, because we're in the last like two hours of daylight, the fish seem to be hitting crankbaits. I think they're just getting a little bit more active and uh, they're coming into the reefs to feed. This guy doesn't need the net. Yeah, look how bright that lure is. You know, I think as the sun goes down and there's less visibility in the water, a chartreuse or bright yellow color lure even shows off more underwater. It's probably because they actually absorb light and because it's a fluorescent color, I think this is called fire tiger, it actually reflects the light and they see it really well. So look at, that's not a huge walleye, but look at the bait that it hit. This is called a shad dancer. It dives out about seven feet, which is perfect for these conditions. was about my uh, fourth or fifth cast, and this fish would be called an eater. Oh, I'm trying to lift him up because I'm not going to use the net. He's not that big. Look at Nice walleye. Be gentle with him because he's got the potential. Oh, I was trying to be gentle with him. The potential of being a 30-incher in the future. You know, with this low light, that sun is just over the tree line. You can really see the gold colors. River, look it, we got a walleye here. So I gotta be careful here because they've got nice, sharp gill plates. Isn't that a nice walleye? Look, I'm gonna very gently slide my hand just underneath the gill plate. I've got my pliers, but these uh, smaller walleye have pretty uh, soft tissue. So you gotta be careful when you set the hook. But there's a nice walleye. He would make a nice shore lunch. You know, because it's getting low light, they disappear so quickly. The water's very clear here. There he goes. Now this crankbait works well because of this wide wobble. So what I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm not really adding action to the crankbait. All I do is fire it out and I'm using pretty light braided line because I want that lure to reach the maximum diving depth. And then I'm putting the rod down close to the water so that that lure dives down deeper. I'm in about 10 feet. And while I'm talking to you, I've got my eyes on my dragonfly, and I can actually see every once in a while a walleye about two feet off the bottom cruise in. Ontario Wilderness Lakes, when you get about four hours north of Toronto, Ontario, are very rugged with lots of rock outcrops. It's because it's all Canadian shield, Precambrian shield, granite. Once you get on the lake and you start looking at the shoreline, there's beautiful lush forest growth. You won't see very many houses or cottages, especially when you get back into some of the bays and channels, no personal watercraft. You might hear a loon or some birds chirping in the background. What I'd like to share with you is my top five pick 
artificial lures, hard baits that work really well for walleye. When you come to a, a drive to wilderness lake or you fly into a lake, especially if there's pike and walleye. The first one is the original Rapala. This is 11 centimeters long. It floats, doesn't have any rattles. It's perfect when you start exploring and you're trolling because it won't go too deep, but if there's a walleye or pike there, it'll come up and nail it. The other one is a crankbait. It's one of my favorites. It's called a tail dancer. This one you can see has a really nice bright yellow bottom. It'll dive down to about 15 feet. So it's great for casting during the middle of the day around those shoals. The next one is a shad wrap, which has a really tight natural action and it also rattles. One of my favorite is called the shad dancer. It's only about three inches long in a fluorescent color, but it produces a lot of fish, especially in the evening because that color is so bright. And then the last one is the rattle bait. It's a rattling wrap from Rapala. And that's very good to use in the middle of the day when the fish are less active and you're casting to shallower water or you want to vertical jig it in deep water. feels so nice. I feel those head shakes on my rod tip. This one's about the same size, maybe a little bit smaller. You know, Richie's is the kind of place where you can come out, even if you don't get up early in the morning, and fish four or five hours and catch like 50 to 70 walleye. Look at it. Beautiful. They're so aggressive. You know, they're part of the perch family. I think that's one of the reasons why uh, they're so aggressive and they hit crankbaits and everything. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cable's Eyewear Retainer. Lightweight, comfortable, adjustable, and waterproof. Even though many of these lakes are reachable by roads, the roads can be a little bit bumpy when you go in. And most of the lakes have no hydrographic charts, even the big ones. So that means when you do get on the water, especially if you take your own boat, you have to be very cautious, look for bottles marking shoals and rocks, and you have to negotiate and try to stay out in the main channels. But you know, it's those same dangerous rocks that are ideal habitats for pike and walleye. And usually throughout the day, you can catch both species of fish, either using live bait or a variety of artificial lures. You know, a lot of people think you got to get up early to catch your walleye, even when you got bright sunny skies. But you know what? If you're on the right spot, like right now we're fishing a pretty steep dropping shoreline. Now steep dropping for up here, we're talking it goes from about zero to about eight, 10 feet. And these walleyes just move in up and down these shorelines and you can catch them pretty well all day long. Now you can see I went to a round jig head and a quarter ounce one so that I'm closer to the bottom. And look at the size of this finesse fish. It's only about two and a half inches long. That's what we would use for like jumbo perch when we fish down south, you know, perch up to 12, 13 inches. But sometimes in the middle of the day when you've got bright sunny skies, it helps actually downsize. Nice little walleye. Just gonna get him back. Okay, quick release. There he goes. Disappear in the dark water. You know, a lot of times when you're fishing a shoal in the middle of the day, like we're fishing here about a seven to 10 foot mark, you can fish slowly. I've got the electric on anchor mode and I'm seeing marks, so I'm just jigging right under the boat. You know, walleye aren't really known for their fighting ability, but they sure taste good. And when you find them, you can get a whole bunch. Nice little walleye. You know what? He's perfect eating size for shoreline, so I'm gonna get him in the live well. You know, whenever we travel to remote lodges, whether it's fly in or drive to, sometimes the lodge owner or the guide will say, no, we just use live bait here. You know, you brought all your artificials and they're not gonna work so good. I find if they tell me that, that there's one lure that I can rely on. It's called the Lunker City Finesse Fish. I'm holding it up right here. This particular lure is about four inches long. It's very thin. 
It's unscented, it has a little split tail, it's very supple, and I combine it with a 1 8 ounce, it's called a finesse fish head, so it's very flat. I cast those to the bottom, and I shake my rod. I don't really jig it and drag it, and the fish usually inhale it. So that's one of the best lures for me to use when I'm on a wilderness lake, especially for walleye. The other one that's a standard is just a twister tail grub. This particular one is about three inches long. It's on a one eighth ounce jig head. A lot of times fishermen take too much gear. It's okay to take all your lures and stuff, but usually for walleye, it's the jigs that produce most of the fish. You know, if you've never fished these finesse fish, they're called, they're made by Lunker City. When you get into these delicate situations and you have a very small jig head, I'm using a 1 8 ounce, a flat one, and I'm just shaking it on the bottom. Sometimes you barely feel the fish on. It's just a light, lightweight. Sometimes it's bottom, but sometimes it's a fish. Look at, you can see that jig. It's just in the roof of the mouth. They're not hooked really well. Look at how beautiful that gold sheen is. Look at it, it's so nice when they're hooked just in the roof of the mouth. You can see they're not hitting really hard because they're not swallowing the jig. So they're just hooked in that tissue right there. If I turn them around, look, you can see where the jig is. That's a place actually, if your line goes loose, that the jig can actually fall out. So there's the jig out. Nice walleye right here from Richie's end of trail. Drive to location. It's about uh, seven and a half hours from Toronto. You can get nice eating size walleye like this all day long with some bonus fish, like three to four pounds. Okay, come on, baby. As my friend Scotty Martin would say, yeah, baby, there he goes. When you do find a good spot that's holding walleye, even if the walleye are small, don't leave that spot. Work the area, because every once in a while, larger walleyes will move in right up to like 28, 29 inches. And a lot of time, if they're small walleye, pike will move in to feed on those walleye. You ever heard of getting up really early to get walleye when it's sunny? Guess what? You can even get them right in the middle of the day. We're approaching noon, and uh, every once in a while, you know what happens is, you'll be fishing a spot, like we're fishing, this spot is in an open part of the lake, but there's a shoal that comes up to about uh, five to eight feet, and it seems like the fish are attracted here throughout the day. You know what, this guy is perfect eating size. Nice wide shoulders, so he's gonna go in the live well. We're gonna have another fresh fish shore lunch, which is nice. It's one thing about finding a fishing spot, it's another thing finding a spot on the spot. Now look here as I'm moving slowly with the electric, you can see the X's on the left-hand side of my screen, and look at the right-hand side, look at all that structure. So this is a good spot, but where those X's are, is where the actual fish hold on those boulders. And I got a bite. All right, under the boat. Easiest way to get a walleye, just drop your line down if you're on the right spot. You know, it's, it's one thing when you're fishing in deeper water to fight a fish, but here, because you're getting them in like five to seven feet of water, you literally set the hook and the fish is on the surface. You know, this is just like opening a big fish's mouth when you go to take a hookup. But the reason I'm doing this, I want to show you that this is a Cummins 5.9 diesel engine. Look, it's an inline six. You got this big truck and that little engine tows the boat, gets me to the fishing spot, sometimes even all the way to Florida and back. So it's very efficient. But one thing that I do, I take very good care of it. And I make sure when I change the oil that I get most of the oil out that has a lot of the bad stuff in it. So when I put the new oil in, it really lubricates everything properly. Now I've got Ryan with me, he's from Blue Chem, and he's gonna explain to you one of the best cleaners that you can use when you add it to your oil before you change it. With diesel engines, it's really important to ensure that our oil system is running clean oil as best as we can possibly provide it to ensure that proper compression is allowed within the diesel engine, because that is how diesels work, obviously, on compression, not spark plugs and not injectors, the same way as a fuel car would be running. 
but to ensure that that compression is there, we want to ensure that the rings are seated properly with clean oil and no residue and no contamination holding them back from reseating. So before your next oil change, add oil system cleaner into your crankcase, take it to your mechanic, that way it's a good drive on the way there, or if you do it yourself, just ensure you run it for 15 minutes or a nice quick little run around the block. That way we can clean all the contamination within the engine, remove all that piston gunk and around the rings to ensure a proper compression and reseating of those piston rings so that you can ensure your diesel will last as long as it should and get you the mileage that it should at the same time. You know, when a lot of people fish some of these wilderness lakes, they use live bait, and that catches a lot of fish, but it's kind of nice when you can find them and actually have steady action using these soft plastics. Now, you can see that jigget is in the roof of the mouth. It just goes to show you that that fish went down to hit the bait. So very seldom, when you're using a jig like this, do you get the hook down here like that. It's usually somewhere in the top of the mouth. When I'm fishing wilderness remote lakes, ones that I can drive to and I can take my own boat, one of the most important tools that I have on the boat besides my motor and my electric trolling motor is my fish finder for a couple of reasons. Number one, most of modern fish finders have GPS and they'll link with the satellite even though there may not be any charts or any Wi-Fi signal for your phone. With my Raymarine Axiom, I can find the fish, they can't hide, and I can get back to my cabin safely. You know, a lot of times when people come on drive-in locations or flying locations, they don't know how much tackle to take with them or how many tackle boxes to take with them. So I'm glad that I've got this actual tackle system here. This bag is a backpack. It's got the straps for my back. It's got tons of room for life jackets if I want inside and even rain suit and so on. But look at the front. If I unzip it, all my satchels are here. And what I've done is I've got everything from twitch baits to crank baits to soft plastics. And right now, I need to change the jig head. So I'm going to go with a pink, pink quarter ounce head. And uh, it's perfect because I've got all my tackle so close. See these blue tabs that are on the boxes? It's actually called Z-Rust. And it's part of the flambeau line. And the nice thing is, even here in these partitions, it actually prevents the hooks from getting rusty. So I'm not sure, it's almost like an anode, you know, on your lower engine, so that your lower engine housing doesn't rust up. The anode is what picks up all of any of the rust that's gonna happen. The nice thing about having a satchel bag like this is that I've got other satchels back at the camp, so I can interchange whatever I need for the day. Richie's End of Trail is located about two and a half hours northwest of Sudbury, Ontario. So from southern Ontario, like the Niagara Falls region, it's about an eight or nine hour drive. What I like about Richie's is that the lake is huge, biscotacing, and there's so many places to fish. I also like the idea of preparing my own food. They have beautiful rustic cabins. They're propane fridges, stoves. You can store your fish and freeze them if you want to take fish home. They have shore lunch kits. They have barbecues at every cottage, a great fish cleaning station. And if you don't have a boat or you don't want to trailer your boat, they have beautiful boats that they rent that are even equipped with fish finders. So it's a wonderful location to bring the whole family. During the summertime, the water's warm. It's so scenic here that even if you don't want to fish, you can just go boating and admire the beautiful scenery and see things like ball-headed eagles and all kinds of wildlife that are on the shorelines. Yes, look at this nice walleye. You know, the water's kind of dark here. You know what? He inhaled it. Think he wanted that finesse? Look it, I can't even see it. You know, this just reminds me of what, how predatorial they are. Look, can you see that jig? 
Sometimes when it's hooked like that in the roof of the mouth, you can slide your finger down along the hook. You gotta be careful you don't get it on the barb. Push it backwards like that, look. So this is what I did. I had my finger like that. You can see the way the hook is. It's not in my hand. I pushed backwards and it came out. Nice walleye. Look at that, nice fish. There he goes. Little tail flap, he was a little tired. You know, we fished during the day and caught so many fish, and now we're getting into that nice late afternoon sun. We had a beautiful, fresh walleye shore lunch. Now we're back at it again, and I got a small pike. There. Nice little pike, look. You can see that finesse fish right in the side of the mouth. When you're fishing up here at Richie's, it's pretty common to get these northerns mixed in when you're targeting walleye. Yeah. Nice warm water, about 72 degrees. Pike usually do a sleeper. You kind of lay on top. Oh, that one just slipped out of my hands. I love to hear that real screech when you set the hook. Nice chunky walleye. You know, these fish don't jump out of the water, but I love the head shakes and they feel nice and heavy, especially when you hook them right on the bottom. Okay, once he's on top like that, that's a good sign. Time for me to grab the net. I think he's too heavy for me to lift up. Okay, come on in. Let me show you off to everybody. And then you're gonna be released. This guy's got a really nice yellow belly. Just putting the rod down. Come on. This is a shallow net and it's got um, that plastic coating, which is nice to get the hooks out. Look at it, isn't that a nice walleye? The one thing that I saw when I was fighting it, look how dark the back is and how yellow the belly is. And you've got that sun that's starting to get goldy, beautiful. And that bait is just, look it, it just fell out. That's why it's so important to keep the pressure on, especially if you're using light line. He's going back in the net this time and I'm gonna hold it out away from the boat so he revives a little bit. So the water is so dark and that sun is starting to go down, it's hard to see, but I'm actually using the net. You can see him right there, he's ready to take off. There he goes, gone, gone, gone. Canadian Sport Fishing has been brought to you in part by Rapala, premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha, conquer outdoors. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Blue Cam, a cleaner running engine for a cleaner environment. I do have a net in the boat, but for these fish, you know, that are under three pounds, because I'm using the 12 pound fluorocarbon leader, it's usually not a problem. Again, hooked very lightly on top. Look it, not a beautiful fish. I hold them like that, hold them like this. They look beautiful anyway. And we're getting literally one after the other. Okay, baby, you're back. <laughs>